Hey there, y'all. Welcome to London. London is one of Ryan and I's favorite cities and it holds a little bit of a soft spot for us. It was the first international trip that we took that was not a mission or a service trip. We think we were here in 2014, so just before our 10th anniversary, we were kind of celebrating our anniversary early. <clears throat> While London is awesome, it is not a cheap city, especially when you get paid in US dollars and you're spending in British pounds. Yeek! Not a good conversion for you. However, one of the best things about London is that it is laced with free things to do. So since we have already tackled all the major tourist attractions in London before on our last trip, and they're pretty expensive, we decided this trip we would show you some of the best free things to do in the city. Let's go. Stop number one the British Museum. Now just to be fair, so that we don't like leave any out or bore you with every museum in the city, pretty much all the public museums in London are free. Now obviously the private galleries aren't, there's a few on the list that aren't, but almost all of the major museums are free to visit. Alright you guys, so the British Museum is one of the biggest and best in the world. You could spend days in there. Um, they have artifacts from at least three of the seven ancient wonders of the world that I saw. There were reliefs from the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus, which if you remember we went to that temple, we went to Ephesus in our turkey videos. We'll link those up here for you. They also had most of the statues and reliefs from the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, which is also in Turkey. And then they have a ton of the reliefs from the top of the Parthenon in Athens. So also the Rosetta Stone makes its home here. So yeah, lots, lots and lots of good stuff. Like I said, it, oh, it has one of the largest Egyptian halls in the world. Um, so yeah, fabulous museum and even better, it's free. All right, stop number two. This is the Somerset House. It is one of the last great palaces on the River Thames. And it belonged to Queen Henrietta. That's a big house. It is a huge house. Also, there is a ton of cafes in here, really cute little coffee shops that are almost empty, which is super nice and rare around these parts. And there is a terrace rooftop with a restaurant and bar that overlooks the tent, so. Number five, the National Gallery. That looks really sad right now. from a gallery of this caliber. Rubens, Rembrandts, Michelangelo's, Raphael's, Da Vinci's, all there, all accounted for. Number four, have an ice cream and peruse the fountains and the statues in Trafalgar Square. Right, you guys so that's probably gonna be the end of day one for us we it is Sunday so we are actually gonna go to Sunday service at Westminster Abbey um, Westminster you should definitely tour we did it last time it does have like a, 
about 27 pounds, 28 pounds? Uh, yeah. Somewhere around 30 pounds-ish charge. It is worth it. We recommend it. Um, you can actually attend service us with, at Westminster because it is an active church. Um, so if you're Christian and you want to go worship, by all means, go see part of the building for free. But that's not like a time to be like looking at graves and taking pictures and trying to get a tour and history and such. Like you just going to church. Number five, we think. On Sundays, you can attend an organ recital at 5 p.m. in Westminster. But again, no pictures, no video, and you don't get a tour. You just get to visit the chapel on the end or the sanctuary for an organ recital. But it's free. Number six, we think, changing of the guards at Buckingham Palace. So the changing of the guards, we're in off season right now. It starts at 1045, only on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Once you get to April and beyond, it'll be every day. But you need to be here, as you can probably see from the people around me, by 10 o'clock to get a good spot. So what happens is they come from down the promenade. You'll see this huge parade of horses and all the things coming down the parade. But to actually see the ceremony, you need to be up against the black gates at the center in the front of the palace. So you want to be right here with all these people. So you need to get here by like 10, 15 at the latest, probably 10 in high season to get a spot. <laughs> So as you can see, there are loads of people back behind us on the Victoria statue. They will be able to see the parade come in. They'll be able to see the horses and the procession. They will not be able to see the actual changing of the guard because it's going to happen behind the fence that way. Another tip, as the palace guard just so lovingly said, these kind of places are prime territory for pickpockets. So she said, had your wallet, had your children, had your husband. She said, because they belong to you and you would like to keep them and she has a big stick and she's not afraid to use it. So there you go. So while it looks really full here, and it is, um, there's still plenty of places to stand to get a good view. It will not be like this. Like we got here 10 minutes till and we found there's 20, 30, 50 places that we could still stand and see. Um, that will not be the case in high season, so just FYI, there will be a lot more people than this if you come in the summer. So this main street is the mall. It leads directly to the front of Buckingham Palace. This is where the parade is going to start, so they're going to come right past this here in a second, around the big Victoria statue, and into the gates at the, at the Buckingham. And into the gates at Buckingham. So now that the parade has passed, about 500 million people are moving that way to watch the new guard come in from the side street. You can try that if you want, but you'll mostly just be in a herd of people the whole time. Number seven, a picnic or a coffee in St. James Park. Now there are lots of green spaces in London. They are all really good for a lot of different reasons, and we'll show you a couple of others today. However, St. James is one of my favorites because it has a really nice view. It sits along the like inlet of the river. You get a view of the London Eye if you walk a little farther down. There's swans and ducks and lots of pretty flowers and Buckingham Palace is on the end. And so you just it's just nice. And usually, weirdly, there's not a lot of people. Like if you so it's kind of just nice. There's benches along the water and 
I like it here. Number eight. This is Wellington Arch, which once you go through that, you go up, you go into Hyde Park. So if you're interested in historical figures or war history, Hyde Park's a great place to go because it is loaded. It's basically an outdoor statue museum. So if there's anybody in war history from England or beyond that you're interested in, they probably have a statue here. Number nine, you can take a free walking tour. So Hyde Park is mammoth and we're not gonna walk it today, but if you continue down this way away from Buckingham for about 30 minutes walk through Hyde Park, you'll see all of or the gist, most of the war memorials and you will also, you will land at Kensington Palace. And Kensington Palace does have a charge to go in, but you can view the palace and the gardens, which are really beautiful and it's probably not as pretty right now. Some of the flowers are blooming, but if you're here during the like late spring or summer, Kensington Gardens is really beautiful and you can tour the gardens for free. Number 11 stroll around St. Paul's Cathedral. This mammoth big daddy of a church costs a whopping 23 pounds to go inside. And since your girl's seen a whole lot of cathedrals, I will not be paying that. Also, I think it's crazy. But anywho, if you haven't seen it, you wanna go in, you go right ahead and go for it. No judgment here, but it's pretty from the outside too. And the outside in the gardens is free. Number 12, the Guild Hall Art Gallery that has a Roman uh, amphitheater in it. So, there isn't much love to the Roman amphitheater, just a few rocks. They do do a guided tour, which would probably give you a whole lot more information and make it more interesting at half past the hour. There's also an app that you can use, and that was helpful. But it is a really, really beautiful art gallery. Like, there's some gigantic pieces. There are like three different exhibits in there. It's worth 20 minutes of your time. Really pretty place. The Guildhall in London is like the home of the corporation of the city of London. So it used to be like years and years ago where you would like come to pay your taxes and such. But now it's mostly got like ceremonial purposes and things like that. Like after the war when the city of London was liberated and Churchill gets out gets everything back, there's a ceremony in there. Stuff like that. Number 13, the Mithraeum Temple. Another ancient Roman site, it is underneath the modern Bloomberg Space Building, which is super weird, but they found it when they were digging. And uh, yeah, it's part of the ancient Roman city. It's closed on Mondays, so we can't take you in today. Unfortunately, we don't have another day, but it's free. You should go. On and you have it more and more you never really know if it was like really that good or if it was just like your first experience but we've now crossed the river we're on Bankside and this is the Anchor Bankside it's one of the restaurants we ate at in London when we first came here it is the first time we ever had fish and chips which is now one of Ryan's favorite meals so now that we've had it literally hundreds more times we can still say that this one is still our favorite like it's still the top so when the Great Fire of London happened, everything from like the Globe Theater, just that way, all down the side of the river burned down. Um, and the anchor was one, rebuilt, and it is one of the, actually it is the only surviving tavern from the Shakespearean period along the river. So it's been here a really long time. It's absolutely adorable, and the food is phenomenal. Number 14. One of the great modern art museums in the whole wide world, the Tate Modern.
Okay, to be fair with this one, the Tate Modern is technically free, but a lot of the exhibits are not. So it is a big, cool modern building. There's some stuff you can see in a few areas of free displays, but a lot of the exhibits are paid. And it looks like they're about five pounds a piece, so take it or leave it. This is what we love about London. You might just be having your coffee at a Preda manger on the other side of a 12th century medieval great hall. Number 17, walk across the Tower Bridge. Number 18, check out the urban art. The east side of London, especially like Schlater Street in Shoreditch area, always has some really, really nice pieces. There's a lot of famous street artists from London and from Bristol, um, so you can always find something good on the east side. If you're into street art, go take a walk down there and do an urban art tour. Number 19, the Tower Walk. Now you cannot go in the Tower of London for free. Um, if you're a first time visitor to London, that is definitely something you wanna do and you wanna like chalk out a block of several hours to do it. It's very, very interesting. It's an awesome tour. But if you've been before or if you're just not into that, you can actually walk between the River Thames and the tower itself and there's a whole bunch of these signs that have like historical information that kind of goes through the years and tells you a whole lot about the tower a whole lot about the river and the area and just kind of walks its way through history so it's super interesting if you don't go into the tower Last but not least, last but not least, number 20, Leiden Hall Markets. So these are a Victorian era, sort of indoor, outdoor market. You can come in for free. It's really, really beautiful. Sort of looks like an old train station. Um, you probably won't leave for free. <laughs> this place is kind of famous for its wine and cheese. And Harry Potter fans, keep your eyes peeled in this market because you might just spot a few of the shops from Diagon Alley. Of different kind of shops in here um, it's fun to peruse even if you don't spend a dollar but you might end up sitting at a cafe and having a little cheese which is probably what we're gonna do now so we're gonna call it a day but I did want to give you just a couple more things that we didn't show you there are a couple of towers in London that you can visit for free for excellent views of the city one is the OXO tower the second one is called Sky Garden 
Sky Garden has a big cafe and restaurant up at the top. It has a beautiful, beautiful view of the city. It's really popular for breakfast and brunch. However, you do have to have a reserved ticket. It is a free ticket, but you have to get it online in advance. They go on sale on Monday, and generally you're booking weeks in advance. So that's something that you wanna get ahead of the game. And then lastly, Queen's House. Queen's House was the home of Anne, Queen of Denmark. She was the wife of James I and VI of Scotland and England, so Mary, Queen of Scots' son. And she had a beautiful house on the outskirts of town, so you have to take a train to get out there. But it is free to visit, and now it is an art gallery. has a be beautiful gallery of art, but also just the house from the 1600s is stunning, and it's a really nice place to visit if you're ready to like get out of the hustle of the city. So that's all we have for you guys. We hope you enjoyed this list of 20 free things to do in London. Remember, this list is not for you if you're if this is your first trip to London. You're gonna wanna see the big stuff. There are things here that are worth paying for. The Westminster Abbey, absolutely worth paying for, especially if you're into British history at all. The Tower of London, again, absolutely worth paying for. It is worth every penny to take the train out to Hampton Court Palace and to see that. It is worth every penny to pay the entrance to Windsor. So if this is your first trip to London, you're going to get the London Pass. You're going to do all of those things. But if you have more than two or three days in the city and you want to explore farther, then take this list of free stuff and get busy. And we'll catch you later. Get lost.